Welcome to the newest installment of the Untitled Film Nerd Project. My name is Philip, and joining me as always is TJ. Hello. And this week we watched. Totally gonna do it. Okay, watch Jigsaw. Jigsaw. We watched Jigsaw. Spoilers incoming, so I'm adding it now. If you want to avoid spoilers, which is most of the podcast, skip ahead to the time code you see now. This is going to be the fastest cast and crew rundown ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because <laughs> uh, it was directed by the Spearig brothers, who have done such movies as Undead, Daybreakers, Predestination, and Winchester. Okay. Yeah, a movie that I was super excited to see. Now I'm not. Mm-hmm. And then the only person I recognized of the entire cast was Logan, who was played by Matt Passmore. And I recognized oh. him. There used to be a show called The Glades. Yes, yes, that's where I knew Yes, from. that's that dude. Um, I remember like back in like 2010. And I only watched it because I thought the dude was cute. Mm-hmm. That's the only reason I ever watched that show. And so, yes, everyone else, I don't, I don't know who you are. There uh, is one other I recognized. Well, other than Tobin Bell, of course. Nope. No, I'm adding him as well. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, she had a very, very brief stint, and you didn't really see her face too well, but Carly, uh, the blonde, they got the needles in the Right, neck. right. Uh, it stains the sands red. Really? Yes. Main actress? Yes. Oh. Did you know that, or did you look it up? I looked it up, but I very it was bugging me mm-hmm. ever since like you you briefly saw her face because she has a very unique face, okay. and huh. so yeah, it'd been bugging me throughout the movie. Wow, good call, sir. I missed that one. And as said, uh, of course, the incomparable Tobin Bell returns from the dead, sort of, as Jigsaw. Uh, so this was a movie. And... Yes, it was. <laughs> this, is part, this is part eight. Part eight of the series. Like, I got to kind of give them props. Like, and nine and ten have already been greenlit. Mm-hmm. There's going to be ten fucking Saw movies. Like, that's just crazy to me to think about. This one is mostly all you. <laughs> I'm just not that much of a fan. Yes, but you you have no thoughts on what you saw. Oh, I, I sorry, I wasn't sure that we were there there yet. Um, so, I, I, I mean, well, we, well, we can go through the the motions and then talk about miscellaneous stuff. Um, okay. So <laughs> this is going to be kind of. <laughs> what was your favorite scene? <laughs> uh, so my favorite scene. Uh huh. Probably was um, right at the very end. The uh, when uh, what's his name Halloran mm-hmm. died. That mm-hmm. was like I, I have to give them credit. That was, that was pretty fucking epic. Death. Uh, like, I'm on the other side of the fence on that one. Are you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I can see how people would like it, so I totally respect that. Mm-hmm. I thought for his character being such a horrible person. Because other people were like, you swatted a fly with a paper when you were seven, and now you're in this trap. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah. Tolerance is like, you fucking like killed people and took bribes and sent these people to jail and killed the dude's wife, and you're a horrible person. You get lasers in the face. Mm-hmm. Like you, He deserved like a really just epic, 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 epic death. I'll give you that, but just the way that his head split open yes, that is was, what I thought was awesome. That was awesome and very Resident Evil and very – yes, yes. That part, completely agree. I was like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite scene because uh, these movies just kind of run together for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess when we got to see um, Matt Passmore without his shirt on because dude's, mm. dude's got a banging body. Mm-hmm. So um, that's my favorite scene. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Respect. Ass- <laughs> I'm assuming our holy shit moment is going to be the same, but I'll let you go first. Um, probably holy shit moment was also kind of a kind of a jump scare moment. Oh, okay. 
It was when the body fell from the ceiling. Oh, uh, okay. Like, ugh. <laughs> but what was yours? Uh, I got to say it was when the dude's head split open. Yes. Because that was yeah. just, that was expected, but I wasn't expecting that shot. Mm-hmm. And for as toned down as the gore and stuff was in, in comparison to other Saw movies. Yes. Uh, was not expecting that. I was like, holy shit. So, yes. So that was definitely my holy shit moment. In a movie that really, honestly, I don't think had many of them. Mm -hmm. I was expecting to have, like, trouble with picking which one. But no, it was easy. Mm -hmm. It was easy. I thought of holy shit moment part two. Mm -hmm. um, holy shit moment part two, which I thought was really well done, was the reveal at the end that what we were watching was ten years ago. Mm -hmm. I was like, that might be actually more of a holy shit moment. Like, I think the head splitting open was like, whoa, like graphic holy shit moment. But plot holy shit moment was finding out that everything we were watching was 10 years old. In some ways, I was kind of already. It was a surprise, but in some ways I was kind of already prepping for it. Mm -hmm. Just simply because previous Saw movies have proven oh, yeah. you cannot trust the timeline of what right. you're watching. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Now, I kept on, even when they were, it was getting towards the end, I was like, okay, those bodies are old as fuck. So how are they going to explain all these bodies that they've been finding? It's like, it's not like you could freeze a body. And then it was, right. oh, he was copycatting the very first. Okay, I got it. it right. It's convoluted, but I get it. Yeah. <laughs> what is your mediocre moment? Hmm. The near the end. Okay. When Logan is, you know, given his monologue mm -hmm. of "I got away with it," and he was talking about using Eleanor as his alibi. Right. And then it cuts to Eleanor. And she runs up to that car, and I understand what they're kind of doing with, like, I imagine they were kind of wanting to leave it on a cliffhanger there. Yeah, yeah. But it was just a, um, what was that look for? Because <laughs> that was not a, oh, thank God, we're saved look. That was Oh, good call. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, a completely different look. Yeah. And then a two-parter yeah. man okay. moment, because okay. I just now thought of it mm -hmm. was the very first body that they found buckethead okay yeah where the hell was the rest of his fucking head <laughs> i'm right at no point do they dig the rest of the head out of that bucket <laughs> and like they're just examining it and i'm like i'm willing to bet it was a head head trauma that killed him um <laughs> you think yeah but maybe i don't know I don't know. But yeah, it was just like a, um, you know, if you're going to do a full autopsy, you may want to have all the body. that shit out of there. <laughs> have the full body to do the autopsy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My mediocre moment is probably a two-parter. Uh, part one is the ham-fisted way they included Logan in the backstory, mm -hmm. which, which along with having uh, wonky timelines, like you said, Saul is notorious for just shoving people into the past timeline to validate them being in the movie. Mm -hmm. I, I was hoping they wouldn't go that route because they do it in like every freaking movie, but I wasn't feeling it. Yeah. It made sense. His motivation made sense. And now he's like some like Batman vigilante or something, uh -huh. but I thought it was kind of mediocre. And this is all encompassing for the uh, Saw franchise in general. And I made a joke about it earlier. The reasons he picks people just don't always make sense. <laughs> uh -huh. Like I made the joke, like you swatted a fly when you were seven <laughs> versus like you murdered your entire family. Like it just, I don't like that. There's not, oh, there's two parts to this. There's not always equal footing with people's like, I guess sins to put it mm -hmm. lack of a better word. I think in some ways, even the character Ryan was kind of poking fun at that. When they were asking him what his sin was, and he's like, I cheated on my taxes, and oh, yeah, I cheated yeah. on my wife, I cheated on both of them, yeah. And, and it's it is very much is what do you consider 
a good enough sin. Right, right. And, and then even so, it's still like, yeah, they sinned, but it's a little bit extreme. Yeah, I mean... And I, hypocritical. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay, one lady uh, from Is Stains of Sands Red, she didn't give a woman her inhaler. Mm-hmm. And if she remember that 350, or 353 or whatever it was, it's the price for life, inject that into you. Yes. That's probably <laughs> the one. Stop bickering about it. Ah, that was an annoying scene. Like, I think there's, like, a lot of mediocre moments in this movie to me. Because mm-hmm. it was... It's a good fluff popcorn movie. Mm-hmm. And, and I only had to bring my notebook in front of my face, like, twice to kind of, like, shield my eyes from what I was seeing. Mm-hmm. And neither of them were really uh, gross-out scenes because there really weren't that many. Yeah, it was just kind of... I didn't hate it. Obviously, didn't love it. But it did feel kind of mediocre. And so, I guess... I, get, I could pick the entire movie <laughs> to, mm-hmm. to make precedence on the podcast for the first time ever. I could nominate the entire movie as a mediocre moment. Now, there was something that this movie alluded to mm-hmm. that made me appreciate the entire franchise overall. What's that? And that was the Agatha Christie reference. The And then there were two. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Down to And then there were none. Yeah. yeah and, which yeah. I, I love that story. And I never once have I ever during the, all the movies have I made that comparison or even thought to compare what's going on to that. But I was like, oh, it's accurate. It mm-hmm. very much is a modern day. And then there were none. It would be so, cool. It would be cool if we started out with like, boy, was it 10 people mm-hmm. in the actual story? That'd be cool if we started out with 10 people instead of like five. Yeah. And then. Yeah, that was one another problem I had with this movie was very low body count as far as the victims that we were seeing. It's uh-huh, like, you know, uh-huh. every time a trap was coming along, it was, okay, well, one's going to die in this room. Yeah, yeah. Now that's going to die in this room. And then even just how easy some of it happened. Like, yeah, I've, I've, what was that character's Mitch? When he walked into the trap. Yeah. Just, well, like, like, he, he just happened to be in the right spot. Yes. That annoyed the fuck out of me. I was like, did you have a plan B? Did yeah. you have a plan A through Z? And my thing was, when they were in the second room, if nothing's happening to you, don't go through the big metal door. Yeah. Just f- try and find a way out. Try try and do something. I mean, uh-huh. that's I, I wrote it in my notes. I was like, just don't go through the door, maybe. Don't go into the silo, maybe. Like, just stay where you are. <laughs> if you've survived this part. Yeah. Stay there. Don't walk into the next room. And you're sur- you're in a room surrounded by random shit. Use that random shit to start disassembling the entire room. <laughs> right. Those bars on the window. Uh huh. Just start chipping away at it with that shovel. They're in a fucking barn. Yeah. It's wood. Uh huh. Like, I don't like. If you survive the first buckethead room, maybe just chill there. Uh-huh. You don't have to die in the rest of the rooms because <laughs> yeah. let, let them walk. Let, let them go into the next room and let them go into the big fucking metal door and then let them fall into the floor and let them go into the silo and into the very end thing. Let them do all that. You'll still be in the first room. And obviously Logan and fucking annoying ass Eleanor will uh-huh. find you eventually and you're saved. Just don't uh-huh. leave the first fucking room. I say it in every saw. Don't leave the fucking room every time. Uh, another thing that bugged me was Eleanor's everything hobby. Oh, I fucking hated Eleanor. Of collecting all those saw pieces. That's the other mediocre moment. I forgot. I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna circle back to that in one sec before I forget. Okay. The unnecessary backstory ish stuff between Eleanor and Logan as like the possible suspect coroners. Like we uh-huh. didn't, we didn't, we didn't need the scene of them at the bar. Uh-uh. And then to your point. I thought her and her little studio of like jigsaw treasures was fucking ridiculous. Uh-huh. I hated I hated everything about the character of Eleanor. I didn't like the actress. I didn't think she was very good. Her delivery sucked. Her dialogue was horrible. Her story uh-huh. she you could have taken her out of the story. I think would have been a be- would have been a better story. Yes. Uh, she just she really just like really just weighed this movie down. She was like an albatross for this movie. I mean, it wasn't a great movie, but I think her yeah. presence and her character just did really the movie more harm than good mm-hmm. so sorry to cut you off there you were talking about her trap oh no you're collection. fine uh, 
just her collection is just like, how did you afford this? I hated the whole, we went on the deep web and we went to the jigsaw chat room in the deep web and we traced <sighs> it back to her somehow. And because it's about only one jigsaw chat room place on the deep web, apparently, which would not uh-huh. be, uh, uh, so many parts of this plot were unnecessary or just plain stupid. Yeah. Yeah. And just the overall thing kind of, I can't remember if I was talking to you or another friend of mine about how convoluted the entire franchise is mm-hmm, to me mm-hmm. and how it's very much reminiscent of Darth Sidious from Star Wars episode one through three, how everything connected because of him mm-hmm. was just so convenient on everything. Uh, in fairness, I have pretty much blocked out of my memory Star Wars episodes one through three. Kudos. So. <laughs> <laughs> I wish all of us could say the same. <laughs> so I'm just like, sure. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> when George Lucas forgot how to George Lucas. But yeah, just basically Jigsaw is Darcidious of the yeah, horror genre. I could see that. I could see that. Yeah, I mean, especially since Saw 3 was supposed to be the last one. Mm-hmm. And maybe if they didn't bring one out every single year up until 6 or 7. Mm-hmm. Maybe, or it might have been this one. And one other thing that was bugging the shit out of me, mm-hmm. just because this bugs the shit out of me mm-hmm. on network TV, they apparently modeled the entire police department after CSI. Mm-hmm. And CSI Miami and, you know, all the neon colored lights, everything's Uh, dark except for the walls, the walls. Who, what fucking city has that budget? What city has that kind of detective guy who's clearly, if he has internal affairs on him? Yeah. Why did it take, why did it take them over 10 years (laughs) to finally bring him in and bring him down? And why does Internal Affairs give up their entire plot at the drop of a of a hat? Yeah, yeah, that was again, it was un- <laughs> unnecessary. It was like an, an unnecessary red herring. Mm-hmm. And which, yeah, this towards the third act had a lot of those. Mm-hmm. Well, second into the third act because it was the coroners. Well, first it was Eleanor, then it was both of them. Okay, side note, side note. Okay, when the one police officer was spying on Eleanor and Logan in the her fucking treasure palace of jigsaw shit. Yep. Why, why would you take pictures with an old timey fucking camera? Film video with your phone. And also, how the hell do you get those angles from where he was shooting yeah. from? He, uh, he had the he didn't have the right lens. There's no way that camera could do that. I mean, maybe, but I'm gonna I'm gonna call bullshit on that. Mm-hmm. Everyone has a fucking cell phone. Mm-hmm. Take it out. Push record on your fucking video and fucking record what you're... Oh, it pissed me off. I'm like, it's not 1992. And at the end of the day, it still is called a warrant. You need Uh, one. I don't even care about that. I'm just like, why were you using an old-timey camera? (laughs) (laughs) Why? It looked like a film camera. Mm -hmm. Like you have to wind after you use it. (laughs) That's what I learned on back in the day. Uh, Surprised there wasn't a puff of smoke. (laughs) Right, yeah. (laughs) Can you guys not move for a minute? I gotta get under this hood. <laughs> Take this picture. <laughs> Shit, you it's move. Like, wow. Go back, go back. All those shots are such good lighting. It's almost like you had a fucking flash. Yeah, and especially with as low light as it was, there was really no noise in the pictures. Really not from that fucking camera. Uh-huh. Uh, are, do you realize our mediocre moment's gone on for like <laughs> it's almost yeah, 10 minutes? Yeah. I love it. Like, I think at this point... <laughs> Probably the main thing I liked about it was just the fact of Matt Passmore. Yeah, he's the only reason that I really enjoyed this, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Because I, uh, I mean the um, uh, 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 Halloran. Mm-hmm. He was a good. He did a, the actor did a good job. Oh playing, yeah, playing yeah. he was a damn good smarmy bastard. Yeah, he was. Um, slime, just pure slime. Yeah, yeah, and he played it really well. So he was well cast. I mean, the supporting cast was decent, other than Eleanor being fucking grating on my nerves. Uh-huh. I didn't uh, mind them. It's just the story suffered, like the Saw movies do. Uh-huh. But this is why I didn't hate it, hate it. Like, I'm annoyed with it, and we're picking it apart, because it deserves it. But 
I think we both can agree. I think we kind of say we we just we kind of lower our standards mm-hmm. when it comes to Saw movies now. So we're not expecting part one ever again. I mean, there were some things I did appreciate, but we'll yeah. get to we'll get to those. Um, was there any LOL moment? <laughs> Hmm. I know. <laughs> Give me some thought. I'm gonna look through my notes. <laughs> see if I have any. I'm trying to remember. Like I thought. Like I, had, I, I guess the I only I LOL moment, which you know, moderately there, was just um, again. What was that character's name? Ryan. Mm-hmm. When after the jigsaw puppet was peddling through, and he's like, "Well, that's unsettling." Yeah, that was that was pretty funny. I didn't like his. I didn't like Ryan. Annoyed me. No, no, no. Again, it's like it's it's like real world on MTV. <laughs> How nice. to, the, nice. every group you have to have one asshole. Yeah. One overly aggressive son of a bitch. And yeah. And that Ryan was it? He was a dick. Yeah, he was. Uh, I like even when he was like when they were trying to get him to pull the lever, I'm like, just pull the fucking you're right there. Just pull it. You're right. He's like, no, I don't want to. I don't want to. Like, you shut the fuck up. Yeah. I can't remember. What was even his sin? I was going to ask the same thing. Because we know what fucking shady fucking evil bitch did. Uh-huh. Holy shit. Like, what kind of fucking horrible evil yeah. person are you? I will say that I liked her up until then, though, because she was like Mrs. Problem Solver. Yes. She knew what to do. Yeah, she had a good head on her shoulder. Yeah. She was well, already not... dissecting the, yeah. everything. It's, but... just, it's just like when Mitch was in his trap. She stopped the uh-huh. motorcycle, grabbed the fucking brake. Uh-huh. You, you saved me. Pull me up. Pull me up. No, maybe fucking grab the brake and yeah, turn it off. Yeah. Dumbass. And that was the uh-huh. o- that was the only death that I thought was justified in the entire film because of the yes. back because of the backstory. That's the only one that made sense to me. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, what he did, yeah, he killed I me. Mean, once he said that was my nephew or whatever, I was like, oh, okay, bye. <laughs> You're getting the nastiest death. Bye. He built a trap just for you. And it has me thinking on some of this. Like, so Mitch's death made also made sense because the boy that was killed was his was Jigsaw's nephew. Right. What's her name? The um, Carly. What was her connection? The drug or the uh, purse snatcher? Yes. I think there's only three connections that I saw. It was okay. uh, End Woman was the neighbor. Uh-huh. Mitch was obviously um, sold the, sold his nephew a faulty bike. And let's see who else was there. It was Carly. She was the purse snatcher. Ryan was the whoever, whatever the fuck he did. I thought there was someone else that had a connection to. I thought there was three. I could be wrong about that, but I thought there were three. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm like, so this woman died of an asthma attack. What was she connected somehow? And also, how did Jigsaw know? Oh no, um, the connection with Logan is obviously he was the one that messed up. Yes. Jigsaw's X-rays. So that was what I was mm-hmm. thinking. Okay, that's why I said there was three. Mm-hmm. Sorry, but how did Jigsaw know about Carly's sin? <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Saw. I don't know. <laughs> and how did he know that it was exactly three dollars and fifty three cents? Because he's fucking Batman, dude. I mean, it would have been awfully awkward if it was three dollars and fifty two cents. Right. Yeah, I it's like well, shit. Now I gotta go reprint uh-huh. this fucking needle. <laughs> right. These are, these are the random fucking numbers. I wonder if the other numbers on the syringes mean anything. It's a good question. That had me thinking. Like, I, I don't think they spent enough time with that trap. Mm-hmm. Because the other two numbers should like everything in Jigsaw's traps means something. Mm-hmm. Everything has purpose. So those other two needles, I think, should have been more important. And yeah, mm-hmm. and I just and then like you know they're hanging and he stabs her all three of them and then she acids to death and eh eh. I like I like it, like we're on LOL moment and now we're just on mediocre moments again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> applause for us! Applause for us! Go us. Yes. <laughs> um, I don't know if I have an LOL moment, to be honest. I can't think of one. Uh-huh. It, I mean, I guess I'll just have to agree with you. And the longest LOL moment ever. <laughs> I agree with you. And yeah, so we can uh, now, that's our little rundown. We can go ahead and keep 
eviscerating this movie. I, okay, positive. Okay, let's let's do some let's do some positive parts. I love the score for Saw. Yes, I love yes. it, love it, love it, love it. I think it's one of the best newer horror scores. It's distinctive, and I love it. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, positive things. Positive things. Do you have any positive things? I mean, I I, I can't deny that it was not. I mean, it was entertaining. And the pacing, I mean, the movie was going along fairly quick. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. So I'll give it that. Um, I was liking the entire corner bit at the beginning Mm. before they decided to have Eleanor speak too much. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. Uh. And then they started having Halloran, you know, oh, well, it's... Our corners are the killers, obviously. Yeah, I just and there's so much from, like we said, Mitch being in the right, his foot had to be in the right fucking spot for that trap. Mm-hmm. To somehow coma guy is in John Kramer's coffin, mm-hmm. which I liked that, but at the same time, I'm like, how? Yes. <laughs> how did you get it out of the hospital? How did you get the people from there to hanging off of a bridge or in front of the hospital, like? How did you dig up the grave? And not have it look like it was dug up. Yes. Question. Because people should have known coming to a 10-year-old grave and seeing freshly buried dirt, thinking maybe we should call off the press conference. (laughs) Right. Maybe we shouldn't have the fucking, like, press right there. (laughs) Yeah. That would never happen. (laughs) Uh, it's irritating, but I can't get mad at it because I just accept it for what it is. The, mm-hmm. the Jigsaw universe is not going to make sense. It's going to mm-hmm. be hackneyed and ridiculous. And it's just varying degrees of, seriously? Yeah, it's going to be <laughs> MacGuffin the fucked out. Uh, but, as you said, we didn't hate it. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> like this, this, I mean, this is Despite not, how it sounds. <laughs> yeah, this, this is not my least favorite Saul. By a long yeah. shot, not my and least. This favorite was song. not my least favorite movie ever. No, so. <laughs> no, no. It was not the Butterfly Room. Yeah. So, <laughs> can we have any more mediocre stuff? You want to go through my notes? <laughs> go ahead and move on the notes. All right, Phillips notes. I did think that. Uh, was it, was, what, you said her name was Carly. Yes. Her death would have been a lot more painful, and she would have been screaming a lot fucking louder. Uh huh. One could argue that the acid was dissolving her throat. I'll give you that possibly. But in the beginning, she'd been screaming her fucking head off. Uh-huh. You're getting, like, eaten out from the inside out. And, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, sexual references and saw. Okay, there was a lot of ug lines to me. Uh, and I think it was Logan early on. And this was foreshadowing. So good on them for this, though. When he says... Give us enough time. We speak for the dead. Mm-hmm. But at the moment, it was a very ugh line. Like, ugh, yuck, ugh, I didn't like it. Um, I thought something was up with redhead coroner lady. I didn't know her name at the time. Mm-hmm. Something was up with Eleanor from the very beginning. But it was just bad acting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How do you not know you're laying on a fucking baby? <laughs> like, once it was revealed, I... I, I Okay, it was it was stricken from the record, but in the beginning, how the fuck? Evil bitch. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. You, oh my god, wow. I was just like so that was the most like seriously moments. That was probably one of the most seriously moments, because how do you, who sleeps like that? That you don't know you're laying on your fucking child. I remembered what Ryan's sin was. Oh good. He was responsible for the death of his best friend and then there was he was responsible again for another death but they never said later yeah didn't they say three in total because yeah the two in the car and then the one later but i don't think they ever said yes again that was a very open-ended maybe they'll come back in soul nine (sighs) i I don't i yeah yeah i thought that was that was another week like other than purse lady which is the Mm -hmm. weakest which is the easily for the reasons you pointed out you know, how did he know? Unless he's fucking Batman <laughs> and has eyes everywhere. And how do you know it was 353? I, how, 
how do you know <laughs> that he? Yeah. How? Mm-hmm. I I don't know. 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 <laughs> I, I just I don't know. <laughs> Jigsaw. I, I just I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and it's even like again, <laughs> not not meaning to harp on it, but Carly's sin again uh-huh. of her being responsible for the woman because she didn't have her asthma inhaler and she chose three dollars and fifty three cents. Okay, well fine, Jigsaw. Why are you not going after the pharmaceutical execs? Yeah. Something. Right. Yeah. Or the <laughs> death of. Hundreds, <laughs> but or, you know, or the cancer people. Yes. Like, no, I'm gonna go after fucking random purse snatcher lady and you know, 18 year old hot guy who killed his friends, maybe sort mm-hmm. of, I guess, because it looked like an accident because he's just being a dick. I guess just baby steps. Yeah, I mean, okay, whatever you did when you were an 18 year old high school student or an 18 year old person, whatever you do when you were 18 years old, you are responsible for in Jigsaw Land. Mm-hmm. Even when you get, especially if you're drunk. Yes, especially when you grow up to be gross. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I don't. Ugh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I told you I had a couple hiding behind the notebook moments. Yes. The first one was when Mitch was trying to grab the tape after uh, Ryan has stepped through the boards because he's a fucking idiot, mm-hmm. and, and the tape was on the other, like on the other pressure pad. So when he was like grabbing for it, I'm like hiding behind my notebook, like ah, don't snap his hand off. Yeah, because then I asked like, there's like so many questions, like in the in that room, like when Ryan fell through the floor, like what if no one went up there? Then you wouldn't have found the fucking tape recorder, etc., 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 etc. And also, what if Mitch and other chick had died from the? Yes. Yep. Bladed items falling from yeah, that was the mail. That was dumb. It's like, well, that shit. Was... I had this entire mon- monologue written out, <laughs> right? It's wasted now. Yeah, oh. I need I need fucking evil bitch to be alive by the end. But why not just throw some random shit on her and almost saw her face in half? Uh, I did say early on, like really early on, on page two of my notes, that this was also an elaborate plan to get the homicide detective because that's so saw. Mm-hmm. Like go like the whole like whole plot the ploy of it is to get is to get like the most evil motherfucker there and he was like evil, easily the most evil motherfucker there other than evil bitch lady. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then going back to the needless coroner subplot, uh, uh, not Ryan Logan is all like, show me your studio, even though, <laughs> even though she just said the cops were fucking following her. Mm-hmm. If they're outside your house, they're fucking following you. If you know you're being followed, at least learn to shut the fucking door behind you. Yeah, that's what that's, it kind of reinforces what you said earlier about the ending in her face. Because it looks like she was doing stuff on purpose the whole time. Mm-hmm. Like, I bet it's probably going to pick up with the next Saw movie. Because, mm-hmm. you know, it looked to be pretty fucking obvious. Right, yeah. Because, yeah, her leaving that door unlocked, she wouldn't have done that. Unless she unless she knew she was being followed and wanted them to come in mm-hmm. and find it. Because so it just made more sense that Eleanor and Logan are working together. Because at that one point, because at the one point when Logan was knocked out, someone stabs or injects Halloran with the needle. Mm-hmm. We never find out who that is, which I did like. That was another positive. We didn't get that exposition. I thought, I thought that was cool. We didn't explain everything. I'm assuming it's Eleanor. Logan now has somebody that he's training. Right, exactly like fucking part two. Jesus Christ. I hated part two so much. I don't remember them. Very well. All I remember was they had really good DVDs. Like, there is that. I think it was the third one had the jail case with the blood on the inside. I thought... I had a really nice one for part one, too. I forget which one it was. Mm-hmm. I might still have that special edition, actually. I, I loved one. I'm still in love with part. I think one is a fucking classic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, three through seven, giant fucking blur giant blur my my friend wants to go through and watch them all and i'm like are you sure you know what you're asking because <laughs> mm-hmm. this is gonna this is gonna be intense but two i remember vividly because i loved one and was excited for two and two just fucking dropped the ball so hard mm-hmm. ugh. Ugh. yeah okay the part where fucking uh halloran's yelling at the cop for letting coma guy get out or be taken i'm mm-hmm. thinking to myself maybe don't put the oldest cop in this city on guard duty Yes. 
maybe have someone that can stay up and watch fucking what's going on. Yes. That irritated me. He was like security guard at the local rundown mall. Old. <laughs> yeah, on night shift. So he can sleep. Like, I'm just imagining him pulling out a gun and his hand shaking, shaking violently. <laughs> <laughs> it's not nerves. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Holy shit moment at first was, oh my god, John Kerm is alive. How? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, but that, you know, turned out. He was my evil twin. Right. <laughs> Big song. <laughs> <laughs> And our other brother, Pigsaw. (laughs) 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 No. Um, By the end, the last trap when uh, stupid uh, Anna says, he wants us to shoot each other. I'm like, clearly he doesn't. Have you learned nothing? But then again, in fairness, they did reference the big swirly trap as being like the first ever. Or one of like before the... Jigsaw was found out to be Jigsaw. It was like one of the original traps that he made, mm-hmm. which was in obviously. So that was we're watching the original uh, trap set up for Jigsaw. Mm-hmm. So I, I wish I'd have picked up on it because I'm thinking about it. They never mentioned Jigsaw by name, and the other ones they know what they're in. They're like, oh my god, this is Jigsaw. Uh, they never say that, so that should have given it away right there for me. That's why I didn't get that. Mm-hmm. Oh wow. So I guess I can't really fault it because they didn't know they were in a Jigsaw trap, but we knew they were in a Jigsaw trap, and her saying that. He wants us to shoot each other. I'm like, no, he doesn't. I even, I like, sometimes I don't see where it's going, but I knew that something was in the fucking bullet. Mm-hmm. I just, I was like, it's, it was, cause he said, like, this is your key to salvation. I'm like, I was holding it or your key to freedom or whatever. I'm like, he just said the key's in the bullet. Listen, then she shot herself in the face. So then, you know, good for her. And even just that entire bit of, you know, he wants us to shoot each other. It's like, well, you don't have to. I mean, you yeah, just, you just sit there shoot, and talk, shoot the ground, shoot the chain. Yeah. I was saying, shoot the chain. God, she was stupid. She's like, I, they did not. I mean, write... She was smart up until that point, yeah, and like, then all of a sudden, she just went Eleanor. Yes, she was. <laughs> she went full Eleanor in that last scene. <laughs> Which then that that could be a little like ha 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 because we think Eleanor is dumb the whole fucking time, but she's probably leading everyone on, mm-hmm. and we think that Anna's super smart the entire time, but she turned out to be a fucking idiot. So maybe they were like, I don't know. They didn't write their female roles very well in this movie. No. Um, they did. No. They were doing good. They were doing good with Anna. I guess once they revealed her giant sin, she just turned into a fucking idiot. So I don't know. I did think something was up because when Logan's lasers went down, why isn't his head in pieces? Like mm-hmm. it, just, it just exploded with blood. I'm like, that's not how that works. I've, I've, yeah. I've seen Cube and I've seen Resident <laughs> Evil. I know how laser things work. That's not how this works. Yeah. You can't... That's not how any of this works. <laughs> you can't fool me, Pigsaw. <laughs> you can't fool me, Pigsaw. Jigsaw's brother. So I, I, just what, thought, like, I well, knew something was up then. They don't have the budget to split the head, apparently. <laughs> it's like, oh, that was the actual red herring. <laughs> yeah, I was like, mm. Budget red herring. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We're poor. <laughs> we're broke. But we're not. <laughs> we, spent, we spent all of our money on the... Uh, Resident Evil explodey head. Mm-hmm. And then it ends instead of uh, what game over is what Jigsaw usually says at the end. Or they usually say at the end of Saw. Like game over. He says, I speak for the dead. Eh. Eh. Those are my notes. Those are my notes. Those are my notes. You want to continue to keep talking about the shit we didn't like in this movie or go to final thoughts? <laughs> I, another thing that I have okay. to give credit to was yeah. Logan, uh, the actor, Pazmore. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. He did a really good job of, like, that deep, evil voice. Yeah, that's true. Once he revealed himself, it's like, good job on that. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, that, that's it. It's a small thing. But. Yeah, I mean, I did like his motivation for wanting to get Halloran. I just thought it was way down. Uh, much like with Eleanor being the giant albatross. A smaller albatross, as I referenced earlier, was that... Uh, I helped Jigsaw build his traps. Like, eh, that's been done. Like, crazy bitch from part two helped him. Uh-huh. Like, eh, eh. And eh. wasn't she killed later because... Yes, I believe so. She was... She was doing something out of revenge? 
yeah, so, or something. Yeah, and we're not supposed to do things out of vengeance or anger. Out but, of, for justice or something. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we're going to get the kid that killed your nephew and yes. put him in a sw- and, swirly grindy thing that looks like the little puppet's cheeks. Yeah. Okay. Is that an okay to go to final thoughts? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, it's all good. All good. We are going to final thoughts. All right. So I guess we've kind of <laughs> in our long taking this thing apart dissection. Yeah. It was very, 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 very flawed. Yes. Very flawed, but not horrible. Yes. I think it does what it's all always does. It makes a convoluted bullshit plot thing. And like you said, uh, without Matt Passmore, I probably would not have enjoyed this nearly as much because I enjoy him as an actor and, you know, enjoy seeing his abs. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, if you're into the Saw franchise like I am, like I know I'm a bigger fan of it than you are, uh, check it out. It did pretty well at the box office from what I remember. Uh, well enough to get sequels 9 and 10 greenlit already. Mm-hmm. But uh, and I do think unlike other Saw movies, they did a good job of, as you pointed out, leaving it open for this next one. Mm-hmm. So now we actually have something to jump off of. So like, oh, there's new people, and this is tied to Jigsaw, because when I was seven, I ran across you know, the street, and his cat got hit, and now I'm in a trap or something. Like, I figure if they don't bring, they have to bring Matt Passmore back, which is why I assume he took the role, maybe, for possible future franchise involvement. Mm-hmm. They'll probably in- involve Tobin Bell some, in some way because he's awesome. But th- this has to focus on Logan and ugh, Eleanor. So we'll see where they go with it. I will watch part nine and I'll watch part ten. I'll probably watch all the fucking saws because <laughs> I just think they're good fluffy popcorn movies now. Mm-hmm. And I did like that they did tone down on the gory, cringy, just bloody grossness. Mm-hmm. Gore for the sake of yeah, just having gore. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I, I did appreciate that. I know some people won't like that. That's that's, what, that's why some people like the movie. Like, I love mm. part one because part one was a story-driven movie. And yes. And this was more of a story-driven movie with traps there to tell the story. Yes, and the one gore moment that we've had was earned. Yes, 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 definitely. Uh, anything you would like to add? I'm talking, talking, talking. No. Nah. No, nah, uh, just that, um, yeah, despite the complete dissection of it, mm-hmm. and you already you already went over this yourself, mm-hmm. it was entertaining. Yeah. I mean, it was a, I, we've watched way worse things, and we've wasted hour and a half of our lives watching movies that were like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. That's At the what... very least, what's her name from Nightmare on Elm Street was not in this, so. Heather Langenkamp? Yes. She, she's fucking... Don't, I'm not going to get started on that. <laughs> uh, Eleanor is a fucking Academy Award winning actress. In comparison. Yes. God damn it. I hate fucking Heather Camp so much. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you do that to me? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I was perfectly fine talking about an acceptable... Well, oh, somewhat acceptable Saw movie. Yeah, I had to go bring her up. Ugh. Now, now I'm going to turn into the hawk. I'm just angry. <laughs> Heather Langenkamp! <laughs> Smash! <laughs> Ugh, yuck. <laughs> All right, come back from the spoilers. We are done spoiling Jigsaw, which is now you getting to hear us do the outro. Well, that wraps up this episode. Thank you for listening. Tell us what you thought of Jigsaw in the comments below. What was your favorite trap? And was there anything that we missed? as far as mediocrity that you noticed that we did not cover. If you like the video, please tick the like button, share it with your friends or cool people who might dig the podcast and please subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on the newest content. Speaking of our next podcast will be on the movie pie whack it. It's how I think it's pronounced. This is a TJ find. Mm -hmm. So I am, Completely in the dark about it, which is awesome, and hoping that it is a hidden gem. Mm-hmm. Same. Hoping on that. That will be the next movie that we discuss. So until then, once again, my name is Philip, And I'm TJ. And we'll be back next time to talk about the movie Pie Wagget. Goodbye. Bye.